Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we're going to be talking about shooting video on a DSLR camera. We've got a lot of questions on Twitter as well as the askmark at adorama.com email address. And almost every question focused on one of four things. Uh, stability, focus, controlling the light coming into the camera, and camera movement. So we're going to hop into the studio and walk through those four things. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is stability, and to help me out today, this is our model Maria, and she's going to actually be helping me hold some of the different uh, cameras and things as well. So um, stability is very important when you're shooting video on a DSLR, and the very basic is just to have a camera like this. This is a D90, and you can hold it very, very tight, and so when you're shooting with nothing but it, uh, yourself, you want to hold that camera as tight as possible so there's not a lot of movement, but that's the absolute worst case scenario. So better than that is to use a tripod and so this is a basic three head tripod. Now this is not made for video but it's better than just holding a camera by your hand and so we've got some stuff on here that I'm going to explain later in the video um, but this is a, a better way to go than a ball head because a three-way head with a uh, video camera on it allows you to move left and right and up and down. But the problem with this is the motion is pretty jerky and you don't really want that and so a better option is to go with a full-on video tripod and so we have one over here and so what this will do is um, this is a fluid head and we've got a big rig on here that we'll explain a little bit later in the video but what we've done is we've balanced this so there's an equal amount of weight on the back as there is on the front and you can see that this is a really smooth motion as well as left to right up and down and then we've got handles here to move that around so the best option is to have a video head now this is a Manfrotto 501 HDV uh, video tripod it's a fluid head and the other thing you can do with a video tripod is it has uh, a ball head which allows you to level out the entire rig so there's a little uh, uh, ball I mean a bubble level on there so when I get this all leveled out I can lock it down and then everything is going to be level and not going to have anything uh, wacky. Now there's some other things. Um, what if you want to shoot handheld? Well, we have some Zacuto rigs here and I'm going to grab this one from you. This is uh, one of them and it allows you to hold your camera right on your body like this and then move that around and that's better than just holding it by hand without something else. And We've got a couple of these setups and we're going to be showing you those as well. So what we're going to do is Maria is going to be in our scene. We're going to shoot some video and we're going to go one by one handheld, this tripod this tripod and a couple of these uh, Zacuto rigs to show you the difference in stability when you're shooting a video. So you ready Maria? All right, let's get started. tripod setups and you can see that the handheld was not so uh, stable. The tripod's much, much better. Fluid head even better. But what if you do want to do some handheld stuff? Well, there are some options and we're going to try out a couple from Zacuto that I really like. We use these in the studio all the time. The first one is called the Crossfire and what it does is it allows you to put this sort of like a gun stock right against your shoulder and then you're using one, two, and then three points of contact to really get this in tight and then you can move and hold this a little bit, actually a lot more stable than just holding it handheld. So the fewer hands touching the camera, the better, because that's going to introduce some shake. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to also shoot with a, uh, another Zacuto rig that we'll show you here in a second. All right, now this is a really nice setup. This is called a Zacuto double barrel. And what this does is we've actually added a mat box to this rig. So it doesn't come with the mat box, but it does come with two grips, comes with a follow focus, it comes with this whole shoulder mount and the weight that's behind me. And what this does is it um, helps to balance your camera out. So when you're shoulder uh, mounted like this, you can make some really nice smooth motion and you can do, uh, you know, it, it mimics a much higher end camera. So it's, you can do it with two hands or you can do a follow focus and then there's a Z finder so you can look through here and you've got a nice uh, eyepiece to focus and make sure everything is good. So we'll show you this one next. Okay. 
Okay, now we're going to talk about how to control the light that's coming into your camera, and you do that using a matte box. Now, we have two different matte boxes here. This is a Red Rock Micro matte box, and this is made by Genis. Uh, they, this one looks a lot larger than this one, but they do exactly the same thing, and that is to control the light from hitting the lens, which causes lens flare. Also, uh, it allows you to put in different uh, filters, and so you have these filter holders that can uh, slide in and out. Now, the most common use for the filter holder is to put in a neutral density filter or ND filter, and that's what we have in this one right here. Now, you use those if you want to keep your aperture wide open shooting outside so you can get really nice shallow depth of field. Well, since you're limited with the shutter speed that you can use, um, an ND filter will allow you to put sunglasses, essentially, in front of your lens so you can still shoot wide open without overexposing the image. Now, these also you can put in uh, like a graduated neutral density filter, and what these will allow you to do is you can actually rotate these and so you can rotate these with the horizon uh, and that works really great. Now this Genus also has the exact same thing. It's got a filter holder and you can rotate these as well. Now let's talk about these big flaps that are on the front of your uh, matte box. Uh, this is called a French flag. This one right here as well as this one is called a French flag. The one at the very top is called a French flag and you can put that in a position and tighten it down. Now sometimes um, you use these to control light if the matte box isn't deep enough to uh, make sure it doesn't hit the lens. And then you also have these uh, flags on the side, and those sometimes are called sideburns. And again, if you have really strong side light with the sun going down and you need to make sure it doesn't hit the lens, you can add those. Now the nice thing is these actually come right off your matte box, so if you don't need them, you don't have to have them on your matte box, and so usually that's what a matte box looks like. Okay, now let's talk specifically about how to use these flags. Um, we're going to show you how to use a French flag. So we have Maria back here, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be shooting with this uh, Canon um, 7D shooting right at Maria, and we have this really strong backlight, and it's going to be uh, hitting the lens straight on, causing a really nasty lens flare, and we'll show you how to fix that with this simple French flag. Okay, now what we're going to do to show you how to use the uh, French flag is behind Maria here we have this uh, light that's coming straight into our lens and that's causing a really nasty lens flare and we want to get rid of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this from a little bit different angle. So what we have here is we have this French flag and all I have to do is move it down until it blocks the light from hitting our lens and you can see that BAMO that nasty lens flare just disappears. So again, I'm going to show you this. This is without the French flag and then moving it down and away goes our nasty lens flare. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to use a follow focus. And what we've done in this uh, setup is we have Maria at three different chairs. So she's at the first chair now and then I'm going to have her move to the second chair which is at a different distance from the camera. And then she's going to come from that chair back to the third chair. Now what I've done is I've marked all three of those positions right here on my follow focus dial. So when she's at the first chair, I'm on position one. When she moves to the second chair, I'll go to position two. And finally at the third chair, obviously, position three. And that way I make sure that she's completely in focus. Now I pre-focus these and mark those with the grease pencil. That's how I know how those are. And while I'm doing that, to make sure that I can actually follow her and uh, make sure I compose the frame correctly, I'll have somebody pull the focus. In other words, they're going to be doing this for me as I'm moving the camera. That's the best way to do it. Now if you're working by yourself, you sort of have to keep both eyes open and one on where your focus points are, the other on your composition. It's very difficult to do, but I know a lot of people that do it with some practice. So let's try it out. Well, we're going to talk about using a dolly to move the camera and a lateral movement, but today what we're using is called a skateboard dolly. It was built by my friend Jeff Caroli out of parts that you can get at Home Depot and online. This is just a platform and on the bottom there are actually skateboard wheels. And the track that this rolls on are just two pieces of PVC pipe that uh, lay on the ground. Now of course there are much better dollies that you can use than this and you'll find a lot of those at Adorama. Um, but we're going to do this today just to show you how you can do this really, really simply. And so uh, let's get started. Okay, now once you have your dolly placed on your rails like this or your PVC pipe, you need to put your camera on the dolly. Now what we like to do is put two legs uh, forward like this 
and then one behind, and that really will make sure it's stable. Um, now, some tripods are going to need to be weighted down. You can also fasten them using some different fasteners. But once it's on your dolly, you can move left and right. And of course, we're going to be shooting with our camera facing this way. And so we'll have Maria here. And we're going to do some lateral dolly moves, um, which are really easy. Now, the more complicated dolly move is if you have your subject uh, this way, and you're moving toward the subject. Because if you do that, you're going to have some focusing issues, and we'll show you how to do that as well. So here we go. OK, so now what we're doing is a dolly move that's coming in straight at our model. And the problem with this is the focus. So what we're doing is we're using this follow focus. And the trick to using a follow focus is this secret. It's called the uh, grease pencil. And so what we've done here is I've marked a couple of things. On the track, I've marked the very last point where my uh, dolly is going to be, so I know where to start from. And then on the actual follow focus, I've marked a point on this that says this is where it's in focus when I start. Then what I did is I zoop, um, zipped all the way in to where my stop point is. And then I marked my focus there. So Maria's looking right at me. That looks good. And then I marked that point on the follow focus as well. And then I made a little arrow because I'm not so smart and sometimes I forget which way to move the dial. So that way I know to go from here to here. And then when I'm moving, I'll come back here to my start point. I can take this and I'll roll the dial as I'm going forward until it stops at the exact right in focus point. Now that takes a lot of practice to do. It's not something that's very natural. Um, you're watching two things at once. The best thing to do is get somebody to pull focus is what it's called. And so a second person will be doing this as the first person's operating the camera. And that's the best way to do it. And that's the way that most professional filmmakers do it, is they'll have somebody pulling focus uh, while somebody else is actually running the camera. So we're going to do that really fast. We're going to have an assistant actually pull focus on this for me so we know that the focus is nice and crisp. And we'll show you what that looks like. Well, that's it for this week. Unfortunately, there's so much to talk about when we are talking about shooting video for a DSLR that we just don't have enough time to put it in one episode. But please watch the Adorama TV product review videos because we're going to be talking about all those different braces and tripods and things that we talked about during this episode. And we're going to be talking about different cameras for shooting video and things like that. So a lot more detail um, in our partner videos, the Adorama TV product reviews. And for those of you who are really interested in more advanced camera movement, I highly recommend a course from Hollywood Camera Work. It's called the Master Course in High-End Blocking and Staging. Now it's a DVD series. It is a few hundred dollars, but I highly recommend it. I haven't found a course that's even better than that anywhere, except for maybe if you went to film school. And even then, I think you'd have a tough time finding something that's that detailed. Well, uh, again, we're out of time. But remember, if you have questions about photography or photography-related gear, please send those to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.